Hey guys, my name is Ryan Central and today we have an incredibly special video. There is a strong chance that you haven't seen this gameplay before that's currently on screen. And that's because this, along with a lot of other pieces of gameplay, is some never before seen exclusive gameplay that EA sent over to us from the Paris Games Week. It was embargoed up until now, but with it they also sent over a big document full of information on all of the abilities and ultimates of the Javelins. They did a behind closed door panel talking about the exosuits and everything about them. They also sent over the audio for that panel which I cannot play in this video at all. But it does give us a lot of information so in today's video we're going to be going over everything to do with the javelin exosuits. Every javelin's ability piece, the gear slots and of course their ultimates. Before we get started though I just want to ask one thing and one thing only and that's to subscribe. This is an incredibly fast growing Anthem YouTube channel so if you do want to keep up to date with all of the big Anthem news and see more content like this then I would appreciate you subbing. I'm not going to tell you to smash that like button. I'm going to tell you to nuke it! We'll go over each of the exosuit javelins in the order that they're in in the document and it's also worth adding that we have some gameplay of certain abilities and we have a few details that were explained to us in the panel but some of these abilities have no information other than their name so what I'm saying is some abilities have more information on them than others and also the names of said abilities are subject to change as this is still the alpha period much like anything in the game at this point. We'll start with the ranger first we know a good amount of the basic information with the ranger so I won't go over that here. The weaponry that it can use is every weapon except the heavy weapon type which can only be used by the Colossus Javelin. Its melee ability is also the shock mace as you're seeing on screen, it's an electric mace. No more needs to be said about it. But the interesting thing, and this applies to all of the Javelin exosuits, is that they all have free gear slots and the abilities slot into the gear pieces. For the Ranger, there's the Grenade Gear Slot, the Assault Launcher Gear Slot, and also the Support Gear Slot. We'll go over the Grenade one first. It's quick to deploy. Grenades lay down area damage for effective crowd control at a moment's notice. Modified grenades can be found out in the field and can be equipped to create different effects including Frost and Seeker grenades. So it's all different deviations of the same ability, that's how abilities work. So all of the abilities that can go into the grenade gear slot are as follows. You have the frag grenade, which is fairly vanilla, it's an explosive grenade, no doubt the thing that you start with at the start of the game. But that also can be changed to stuff like a frost grenade, which you're seeing on screen with some new gameplay, with the freeze effect, CC in the target. You also have stuff like the inferno grenade, which we don't have gameplay of, but it's easy to assume that it's a fire grenade and does fire damage. And you also have some really interesting abilities such as the secret grenade. This grenade splits up into different sections and then hones in on enemy targets. And you also have a sticky bomb which again self-explanatory with no gameplay footage where it will stick onto a target and then explode. So all of these abilities can go into that grenade gear slot but they cannot go into say the assault launcher gear slot which we'll go over now. This is the ranger's wrist launcher allowing for a variety of modules to be loaded on for extra bursts of firepower. This provides a more flexible combat approach that can take down threats very quickly. The abilities that can go into this slot are as follows. You have the honing missile which is fairly self-explanatory, it hones in on targets. You also have the venom dart which is very interesting, again no gameplay but it shoots a dart at the enemy and then applies a damage over time effect to them. Then you have the blast missile which I think we saw in the live stream just being fired out at nothing. I'm not too sure that could be the honing missile for example but that's what it should look like. But you also have the energy pulse and the spark beam and I have no idea what either of them do. But based off how abilities work in Anthem that we've seen so far, it'll be very similar to a honing missile or a missile in general. It'll be an ability that you blast out as a projectile at the enemy. Now this is where it gets really interesting. As I said, each javelin has a support gear slot and for the ranger, they are capable of creating special fields that allow its allies to take a tactical advantage. The two abilities that go into this slot for the ranger are the muster point, which is an area of effect field on the ground the allies stand in and it increases their damage and also the bulwark point which I assume reduces the damage taken based off its name. So if you're taking a lot of damage you place it down on the ground and your allies can stay there and not get healed per se but take less damage in it. That's what I'm assuming. And then of course you have the ultimate which is the multi-target missile battery. As I said some of these names are subject to change. Lancers can deploy a special ultimate ability that displays the true strength of the Javelin Exosuit, dealing precise damage across a wide swathe of the battlefield. The Ranger's multi-target missile battery allows it to target many fast-moving enemies with guided projectiles. We saw this way back when, two years ago, 
But here's another look at it and also all of the other gameplay that we've seen of the Ranger has been playing in the background. They are smaller clips but they're all never before seen. But without further ado, let's go over to the Colossus. The Colossus is the thick boy as we all know, the weapons that he cannot use are the pistols and the SMG, the two smallest weapon types but it can of course use the heavy weapons. Its melee ability is heavy smash, it hits the ground, what more do you need to know? And it can also use a shield, fly around with it in the air and also use it to hit enemies. The Colossus's two main gear slots are the Ordnance Launcher Gear and the Heavy Assault Launcher Gear. For the Ordnance Launcher, it says utilizing the incredible strength of the Colossus, these shoulder mounted weapons are capable of dishing out punishment to enemies near or far. In brackets, your choice. And the abilities that go into this slot are the high explosive mortar, which is the big single mortar that you've seen on screen. The burst mortar, we've seen a lot of this, it's the multi mortar with a lot of smaller shots. You have a firewall mortar, which I think is the mortar that does fire damage, as we saw from the first bit of Colossus gameplay. The lightning coil, which I assume would just be another mortar, but with a lightning element effect. And a shock coil, I don't know what the difference between a lightning coil or a shock coil would be, but there seems to be one. There's no gameplay on either of them. The other gear slot is the assault launcher. The Colossus allows for the fitting of a number of wrist mounted weapons that can complement its other destructive options. It has a heavy cannon, which I guess would be a little bit stronger than the LMG. You have the flamethrower, which we've seen a little bit of already. You have something called a flat cannon, a railgun, which we have seen before on screen, and an acid spitter, which much like the ability for the ranger, would hit the target and apply damage over time effects. For the support gear slot, the Colossus is capable of supporting its allies by decreasing the incoming damage and diverting enemy fire towards itself. Because the two abilities, a taunt, oh my god yes, which will force the enemy to attack you over your teammates, and also deflector pulse which going by the text beforehand will deflect that damage back at the enemy. The Colossus's ultimate ability is called the Siege Cannon, it's ideal for clearing out smaller enemies, controlling enemies in a choke point, or putting out some extra damage on a boss. We've seen a good amount of this, but all of the gameplay that was sent to me that we haven't seen before is on screen now for you to check out. But that's everything on the Colossus, now we move over to the Storm. Here is the Storm flying around gracefully, but it is worth adding as well. When you are in the air, you have a little bit of a force field shield, which gives you an extra little bit of health. That is only effective when you, the Storm, are flying in the air. It doesn't work on the ground. So this Javelin always wants to be airborne. It can use the same weapons as the Ranger, can't use the heavy weapons that a Colossus can, and its melee attack is the Fiery Strike, where it deals damage and knocks back enemies that have gotten too close. Now the Storm works in a different way to the previous exosuits that we've gone over. Instead of having gear slots, it has something called seals. Not that seal! And the information goes over them saying the seals which are built into the Storm can use various gears to tap into the Anthem to release raw elemental energy in the form of Kinesis abilities. Lancers can equip three Kinesis gear abilities total, one of each from the sections below. The three gear slots for a Storm are called the Blast Seal, the Focus Seal and the Support Seal. The Blast Seals include stuff like the Lightning Strike which we have seen a little bit of, but it also includes stuff like Ice Storm which I assume would be a very similar ability, putting an AoE effect on the ground which will slow and freeze the enemies that are in it. You'll also have Flame Burst which I'm sure will do fire damage to those in that area, a Rhyme Blast which I assume is the same it could be, a Toxic Attack and also the Living Flame. I don't know how any of the last three abilities differ from one another but we at least know their names. You also have the Focus Seals which include abilities like the Hawfrost Shards, a Fireball, a Ball of Lightning, Glacial Beam which we are seeing on screen right now and an Arc Burst. So all these abilities are fired from the wrist at the target, kind of like the wrist abilities from other exosuits. And the blast seal is all about slamming damage into an AoE on the ground from above. And then of course you have the support seals. The storm support abilities play towards its strengths of damage evasion and damage output, helping allies stay safe and take down enemies faster. For example, in the support category you have the nexus ability, which decreases the cooldown of your teammates abilities. And then you have the wind wall, which I'm guessing would have to do with your overall speed, or attack speed at least. The ultimate ability has a name, it's called the Elemental Storm. Manipulating the raw force of the Anthem, the Storm emits successive blasts of frost, electricity and fire, ending in a meteoric finale. We get a better look of it on screen now. And last but certainly not least, we have the Interceptor. 
The main thing that I wanted to highlight with the Interceptor is this is the first gameplay that we've seen from the Interceptor's perspective, so do cherish it, I will be playing all of these clips over and over again as we go over this section. Now I have noticed the further down this document I get, and towards the Storm and Interceptor, the less information we have available to us. Do bear in mind that the Storm and Interceptor are the last to get finished, but they're not in an established area like the Colossus and Ranger. The look next to done. The Interceptor and the Storm can have a lot of changes. The Interceptor again could use the same weapons as the Ranger and the Storm, can't use the bigger weapons that the Colossus can, and its melee ability is the double bladed daggers, which they use to deliver a flurry of slashes, dealing damage in a chain of powerful attacks that can be continued indefinitely. The the Interceptor also has a different set of gear slots that are called Technique Gear. The Interceptor Javelin uses a variety of gear to perform devastating techniques on the battlefield. The three gear slot sections on an Interceptor are the Assault Systems, the Strike Systems and the Support Systems. The abilities that go into the Assault Systems are the Seeker Glaive, where you use one of your double bladed daggers, you throw it at the enemy and it follows them, an Acid Bomb which I do believe we see on screen here as you're dashing in and dashing out. You have a Cryo Glaive which I assume is going to be like the Seeker Glaive, you throw it at the ground, the target that it hits will freeze them, a Cluster Mine which I guess would be similar to the Seeker Bombs of the Ranger, and also a Spark Dash, which again, not quite sure what that does necessarily. So the Assault Systems are based at throwing out projectiles, either your Glaive or Bombs, Cluster Mines for example, but the strike systems on an interceptor are a little bit different. Instead of throwing out abilities, you yourself extend the suit as an attack, so you dash through the enemy and do damage when you do so. The abilities that go into this gear slot are the Star Strike, the Plasma Star, the Nova Strike, the Tempest Strike, and a Corrosive Spray. There's no other details on what these abilities do, and the gameplay it's hard to tell when they're being used because there's no UI on screen, but all of these abilities, the interceptor dashes into the enemy and dashes back out. And finally, the Interceptor support systems are a target beacon, which I assume when you use on an enemy, it takes more damage, but I'm not 100% sure. Or the Rally Cry ability that goes into this slot, which removes status effects of teammates. And of course, we have to go over the ultimate ability, which is called Assassin's Blades. The Interceptor becomes supercharged, arming its Assassin's Blades and cabin through the enemies at high speed like I'm showing you on screen. And as I said, this is the first time that we have seen Interceptor gameplay from their perspective, so do cherish this. And that goes over every ability of the Exosuit Javelins that we know so far, all of the Ranger, Colossus, Storm and Interceptor abilities. I'm sorry that I can't get more information on each of them, but as soon as I do, I will cover it on this channel. If you really enjoyed this video, want to know more then do subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with more information as it comes out thank you very much for watching and share this video around to your friends that are interested in anthem i think this video itself has the most information in it but take care and i'll see you soon